Hi guys, so in this video we will learn about the Angular 18 new feature that is nothing but the built-in control flow. So what is this built-in control flow? Angular templates support the control flow blocks that let you conditionally show, hide and repeat the elements. So previously we know about this if condition, right? So whenever you want to implement the if condition, for example, let's say that uh, we are having uh, two elements, let's say that. Um, Let's implement something like a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 16. Let's assume. So these are the elements, these are the variables which we are having. And now the properties if I want to implement means, so here I can write in such a way that, so ng if, okay, so this ng if a is greater than b means, then we can write a is greater than b, okay. And if a is less than b means then we will write in such a way that if a is a is less than b used to implement like this or if a is equal to is equal to b means then we will implement in such a way that a is equal to b. So this is the scenario which we will be writing. So this is the condition normal condition but in angular 18 so we have got a new way of implementation of this if condition that is nothing but additive. So the additive block conditionally displays its content when its condition expression is truthy. So how we can implement the same scenario is for example let's say that so I will be having this div. So you can directly write the if condition okay if a is greater than b then you can write the div and you can mention it a is greater than b okay and now you can also write something like else if so else if a is less than b means then you can also open another div and here you can write here a is less than b so this is also one situation and now if you don't have anything means so at the rate else you can write it and here you can write div a is equal to equal to b so you can write it like this so that's it so this in this scenario this one also is implemented so now if i try to mention it as 20 or something like this so now you'll be able to see the condition has been changed so here at the rate if a is greater than b and else if and else you can use it like this the if block might have one or more associated else block immediately after an if block you can optionally specify any number of else if blocks and one else block so one else block you should need to have and you can optionally include any number of else if blocks so that is the scenario so not only this one so now the new built in if so the new built in if conditional supports referencing of the expression results to keep a solution for the common coding patterns for example if you are having an a observable and for the observable also you can able to get this data for example let's say that i am having an user okay so users let's assume so users is equal to and this one is an observable so i will be importing the observable and i will send an array of data okay let's assume okay so one two three four so the length of this one is four so now if i want to use this one means i can use it without any problem due and here in this due i can write here at the rate if dollar users and you can use this async as users and here you can use something like do users dot length that's it so you can use it like this also not a problem without any problem you can use it property dollar users doesn't exist why so i'm not using this users dollar is there okay and here okay so i am using it at the last users dollar fine so now you can able to see the output for this one four so that means you can also use the observable pattern so which we will be trying to use it in the in our ng ng if right so in the same scenario you can use this this one also if block also so this is about the if block so uh, if conditional statement how we can represent is this is how we will be representing not only this one so for the block repeaters like uh, for loop also it has been changed previously we used to use the ng for right 
but we can use directly the for loop so for example let's say that you are having an uh, items let's say that items is equal to i will have 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7 let's assume okay and now i want to loop over this one so you can loop over this one without any problem so do and here i can use the for loop okay so here item of items i need to use item of items and you can use something like do item okay so you can use directly item and now you will get an error here why because we need to use the track so anything any collection that represented as any javascript iterable we can use it in the for loop so now you need to have a track expression so this track track expression means so the unique name the unique value whatever the unique value you are having so you need to keep the track expression for this one now you'll be able to get the value the value of the track expression determines a key used to associate array items with the views in the DOM. Having clear indication of the item, identity allows Angular to execute a minimal set of DOM operations as items are added, removed or moved in the collection. So whenever you any items are removed, adding anything in the for loop means, so this track will give you the minimized DOM operation so that the performance will be increased. So must ensure we need to have a track item. So now you need to understand that you don't use the track for the index. So if you use the track for the index means then it will create some performance. It is not an efficient strategy. So that is one thing which you need to understand. So one, this is about the track thing. Apart from this one, there are also some other contextual variables also. Inside the for loop, there are some other variables also. For example, let's say that, so this is our div, right? So let's try to have an uh, HR, okay? So that you can able to have one line here. And this is the value actually, okay. And now you can also have the count for this one. So for example, I want to know the count. Let count is equal to dollar count. So this is a contextual variable which you can use it. And here if you want to have this one means count means. So here you can have this count. So total count is nothing but seven values, right? So you'll be able to get the count seven values. So this one also you can use it. And not only this one, you can also use the index also. So index is equal to dollar index so dollar index is the variable and if you want to use this index means so you can use this index and dollar index now you'll be able to get the index value as 0 1 2 3 4 like this okay and the another one is first variable so which is the first variable so that first variable will return true or false if it is a first variable means it will return true or false so here you can use the first is equal to dollar first and here i can write the first as dollar first okay so this is one thing which we can use it so now first for the first one it is returning true for everything it is returning false in the same scenario you have another one also that is nothing but last is equal to dollar last so now you can copy this one and here you can paste the last and the last you will be able to see see for the last you are getting false but for the last item you will be getting it as true not only this one we can also get an even and odd order odd also so for example let's say that here I will add another one that is nothing but even is equal to dollar even and here you can have odd is equal to dollar odd so these are the two things and here I can add the even as like this and the last one is the odd we can use the odd also so now here if you try to see the even is true and the odd is false and here even is false and the odd is true so like this you will be able to get the values for this one so this is how we can implement the values so this is how we can implement the these all the even and odd we are able to get it so hope you understood about this concept so these are all the different types of for loop so these are all the different types of contextual variables which are available in this one so hope you understood about this for loop if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you